Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno. As the crowds go wild for Daniel Radcliffe here at the BFI London Film Festival for Kill Your Darlings. With regards to the, the stories, is there a, a story about men finding their voices? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that's what it is. It's about um, painful choices that you have to make in order to find your voice creatively and, and in order to grow as a person in life. That's what Kill Your Darlings uh, is, if there's a moral. And you had access to Ginsberg's diaries. How yeah. did that help you get into the psyche of who he was? Um, Ginsburg's diaries, are, when he's, particularly from when he's a teenager, you know, they're almost like he was writing for somebody else to read them. He, he seems to have some sense that he was going to be somebody one day and that people would be reading his diaries at some point. And so that was kind of, and just reading them and finding out the difference between who he is and who he wants to be. And in the gap between those lies the character struggle, hopefully. You're playing Lucian, who is the person that really is connects everyone in this film, isn't he? Yeah, that's right. Lucian uh, was the person that introduced Allen Ginsberg, uh, Jack Kerouac and William Burroughs all to each other and he's very much kind of the catalyst behind the Beat Poet movement. And uh, through through your character we get to see, uh, the audience get to see rather, a side of Michael C. Hall that we've not seen before. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, that's more Michael than me, but I suppose, uh, you know, we are in a, we in the film, we've been in a relationship for seven years at this point. And, and what have you taken away with you from being a part of this film? Um, well, it's it's an incredibly gratifying experience when you pour your heart and soul into something so small and it, and people have such a big reaction to it, you know? Uh, I think that's a good sign of, of the world and a good sign of the fact that you can make these small films and people will still want to go see them. Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Look at this. What a turnout <laughs> for your first film. It's very humbling. I can well imagine. Now, this story as well has been covered up for years. So for you, as your first film, it must have been just golden to get your teeth into. You know, my best friend came to me 10 years ago telling me this story, and I had never heard of it before. He, he is a playwright, and he wanted to do it as a play. But of course, I started seeing the movie version go on in the back of my head. And so I put on my best Jedi eye mind trick and convinced him that it would be a horrible play. But as a movie, it would be fantastic, and we needed to write it together. No, but this has been 10 years in the making. Just to have this kind of turnout and to be here right now is so incredibly poignant. And, and you're also working with such an accomplished cast that, that are young as well. So for you, as a first time um, behind and helming the, 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 the story, that, was, that must have been such a boon. It was. You know, this is my dream cast. And I'm not going to lie, it was slightly intimidating as first. But I spent the time with them and they gave me the time to really get to know each other before we even started production and to build these relationships of trust. In fact, Dan even taught me some directing tips. I said to him a month beforehand, I said, Dan, I'm about to start my first film. What the hell am I getting myself into? And he's worked with some of the best, so he had some great advice.